Hi Gareth, welcome to your free website review video. So the first thing we check is the speed of the website. Um, now, there wasn't really much point in doing this because I, I did actually do this the other day because um, it, it does load very, very quickly. Uh, the average, I'll just give you a couple of facts. The average time is around three seconds. Uh, for every second after that, Google say you lose 7% of your kind of conversions. So um, it's not something obviously you need to worry about right now. Um, but in terms of conversion optimization, there's, you know, a lot more to worry about rather than speed um, at this particular moment. But, you know, bear in mind, if you do have a new website designed, it will be, you know, it will be fast loading. So, so that was the first point. Uh, second point is the SSL certificate. We've already talked about that, obviously, when it says not secure, um, rather than, you know, the padlock and the connection is secure. Um, so obviously that does need addressing. Next step is the security of the website. Um, now I can't ch check this out fully because I don't, I don't have the logins for it, but the, the biggest, um, sign of a, a website not being secure is being able to find the login page just by typing the standard protocol of the, uh, WP admin. Um, so obviously there's, there's no security in, ter in terms of, you know, against potential hacking that, you know, there's, there's robot hacking pieces of software out there that will go out and find websites. And the first thing that they do is try and find the login page and then they'll try and infiltrate the site to obtain people's data. Now, obviously you don't actually store people's data in the back end of the website, but they can actually, they can obtain so much more data than you would imagine. Um, it, for instance, they could obtain data for of anyone that's ever landed on your website. For instance, um, so yeah, the, you know, there's there's that's a whole that's a whole another video really. The security, but it's something that we we do as standard if um, if we develop your new website. So let's just go back. So the next step in the process is the GDPR policies and the cookie pop up box. Um, now I've, I wanted to show you Erwin Mitchell's website, but I've, I've already pressed so that they have like a square pop-up box. You can check it out for yourself that asks people to accept the cookies. Um, there are, um, free versions out there. If you're happy with just having like a bar at the bottom with like an okay checkbox. Um, let me just go, let me just try and find one of them for you now. One second. So this is a website that I've actually designed. Um, it's Care Connect in Berry. Um, and obviously because they're a care company, they do um, adhere to to the policies very well. Uh, so th this is what I was talking about with the bottom box. Uh, and it just asks people, or it just tells people we use cookies. Um, and are you happy with it, basically? Everyone clicks OK, as you'll know. Um, and then the other, the other thing is obviously the policies, terms, privacy and cookie. Uh, we can supply them if you need them, or you can you can give them us, and we can obviously put the links in, in the footer. But as you can see, they're web designed by by web design Berry. So the next step is the the conversion optimization. Now this is the most important part because obviously this is what's going to get you more business. And there's quite a few step, there's quite a few processes in in this uh, in this area. So we'll, we'll be talking about this for probably the next ten minutes. So the the first one is a live chat facility if you, if, you know, if you're comfortable with having one of those. So basically you have like an icon here that says, you know, live chat. You will have seen them, seen them on other websites. Um, we've got access to a free version, which is very good. And we can set that all up for you. There is a setup fee, obviously, um, for the time that it takes us to set it up. And obviously we go through all the requirements that you would need in terms of... You, if you only wanted to switch it on when you wanted, we can do that. If you want it set for nine till five, you can do that. If you want it out of hours, you can do it so that when they try and talk to you on the live chat over here. Um, so basically they click the icon and it pops up with a box and you, you can type and whatnot. Um, I can't, I, I, I would show you the whole thing, but I'll, I'll run out of time on the video. Um, and you can actually do it out of hours. And what that does is if someone looks at your website at nine, 10 o'clock at night, and they click on live, like the, it, it looks like you're live. Um, so they will actually contact you by that. They will contact you by the live chat facility rather than the contact form. 
contact forms are something that have been around for forever. People want instant answers. Um, you know, some and, and as well, some people will request a callback. And what you've got to do is you've got to tr try and um, cover every angle of, of the way that people inquire. Obviously, people don't expect to talk to you at nine o'clock at night. But with the live chat facility, um, I mean, you could, you could even have it, you, you can have it set up where it's live on your phone. You probably don't want that. I wouldn't want it. I don't, I don't even have live chat on my website because I just, I don't need it. Um, I get that many inquiries through Google because I'm number one and, and whatnot that I don't need, you know, the extra business through that. But if I was, you know, if I wanted more business, that's something that I would definitely put on my website um, because I, I know that I'm losing leads through that. Um, through people who are obviously landing on my website and then not having the option to be able to talk to someone straight away. Because uh, that's what people want to do in the daytime now. So the next one is social proof. Um, this is covered in terms of testimonial, like real looking testimonials, um, obviously real social media accounts that, that are quite active. Um, just proof that the company is kind of active in the industry. So if you imagine, if you if you were looking, you know, take yourself out of of your shoes. If you were looking for a solicitor, and you obviously typed in Google uh, solicitor in Ramsbottom, and then you looked at two or three solicitors websites, and then one had you know Trustpilot. I mean, four thousand. Obviously, these guys are you know a different level. They're huge. Um, so, but you can compete with people like these guys because. Some, sometimes people do want the more personal touch and that's what I would get across in your website. Um, you know, more of a personal touch. You're not just a number. You're not just, you know, uh, we don't deal with a thousand cases a month. Um, so, you know, we really focus on the clients that we, we do we do have. And that's the message I would probably get across um, f for your firm. Even though you do have some obviously very prestigious clients because I've obviously looked through the testimonials or whatnot. Um, but yeah, it's just something to think about. Collect more reviews on Google. I have checked your Google out um, somewhere around here. And you, you've got four there. Um, but if someone's going to search and then they find someone with 20, they're always just going to gravitate towards that. And obviously, you've got hundreds of clients that you could have collected reviews off. And it's something that everyone neglects. I do it myself. I think I've only got 17. Uh, yeah, so I've got 17, although it's five stars, I've, I've only got 17, but, it, you know, I've done over 300 websites. It's something I neglect as well. But again, I don't really use, use it. for me, my competitors, when, when people search for Web Design Berry, for instance, and you come to the listings, one, I'm number one anyway in the in the local listings. That's my website. Two, I've got the most reviews out of everyone. So that's what we look at when... When we, when we look at this area, we look at like the competitors. If, if the competitors only got five, then we'll, you know, we only need 10. We only need 15. You don't have to go and get 4,000 like Erwin Mitchell. That's just, you know, ridiculous in this instance. Um, so, yeah, that's that's that point covered. So the next point I wanted to touch on is the, the colours. So if we flick between the Erwin Mitchell site again, you'll just see how fresh and clean that website looks. And also the amount of content that's on the homepage. And it's it's actually not about the amount of content. It's about the amount of um, kind of links to other areas that people would be interested in. Obviously, when someone's looking for a solicitor, they're usually just looking for one service. Uh, and they cover it very quickly, you know, in their first scroll, so to speak. And then even into the second one. Um, obviously, this is something that they've added because it's, you know, very important. Um, I would have liked to have seen what was there before, obviously, the coronavirus. But yeah, and then we've got contact, our, our offices um, and then our people. And then we've obviously got a search box and then what our clients say. And this is this is a big part of, of what I think we need to add to your website. And then also, like I said, in terms of like being active and looking, you know, not looking, but being omnipresent, um, you know, they, these do do a lot of work in terms of getting content out there and um, looking active, basically. Because, uh, you know, if you, if, you, if you wanted a builder for 
to say if you wanted a new conservatory and there was a builder who had who was posting the work all the time you know every couple of weeks and then you went on a, a builder's website who hadn't posted for three months you're always going to gravitate to what you know towards the the more active one so hopefully that's uh that makes sense and then also a contact form on the home page it's you know 100 percent. that's what you need and then again we you know it doesn't look like there's loads on there but it literally covers every aspect of the client's journey in terms of what they're looking for sometimes a client will come on and just look for a social media link and that's what you would need to put on there so I'm running out of time, so I can't really cover. I might actually make another video, to be fair, an extra video. There's a few more things I want to cover in terms of like the videos. Um, you know, if you if you had a video of you talking and introducing a company, that increases conversions by easily fifty percent. Then we've got the contact, the ways people can contact you. Um, obviously, we've only got the email. Hardly anyone will just email you direct. Most people will call. Uh, and then you can request the callback or the contact form. But, you know, if you had a contact form here at this stage, when people have got to the end of the information, it, I mean, the customer journey more or less is they land on your website. They're looking for, fam say, family legal advice. So they want to go to the family page. Um, now, I can't find that easy on, on this website. Obviously, being a web designer, I know it's going to be in the personal, but you should have a family box there. Also, my suggestion is to have either some nice icons, some little snippets of text to go with the, you know, each heading. Um, I mean, Irma Mitchell haven't even done that, to be fair. What they've done is um, they've based their website around the customer journey. So, uh, like I said to you, do you remember me saying about the human, you know, interaction and the human kind of feel of the website? Um, and I hadn't, I hadn't even, you know, it's such a coincidence that I'd never even found this website until today. I've known of Erwin Mitchell, but I've never looked at the website, not for years. Um, and the fact that they've actually got that there just, just goes to show how important that is. Um, and then this heading is always something to, to address. You know, it needs to be short, concise. Uh, but then we, we straight away, we come into, yes, we've got personal legal services, but then we've got the list of, services and what that means is people can actually click on the link that they actually want straight away so for instance if i was looking for a conveyance in you know i'm still on the home page and then i've clicked to uh, the page that i wanted and again we we always see the social proof always it's always there at the top of the page it's in your mind it's it's in your face um, whereas if i was looking for there, I'd have to click on le learn more and then residential property um, rather than conveyancing, which isn't that it isn't an issue, that to be fair. And then get an instant conveyancing call, that's fine. Um, I can, I, th I think the way you might have structured that is because obviously you, you have different solicitors for different areas, which is fine. Um, but on the home page, we can obviously structure that information a lot better. Uh, what I would say about this area, the sidebar, is that we would you know a picture of the actual person would increase conversions massively and um, you know there's there's so many a b tests on that saying you know that if there's a picture of the person that you're dealing with uh, people are, are more likely to inquire and um, obviously you could put the phone number in there as well you could also um you you did have the contact form but it's not working that's literally just because the plugin's out of date but in this sidebar, you could literally have so much more information that would convert even better for people. So, for instance, on, on this page, what I would suggest is um, the contact form I would probably put at the end of this section. I would have the solicitor. I would have a picture of the solicitor. I would have his email, phone number. Then I would have a testimonial of someone saying, I have dealt with Martin. You know, he was amazing, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then, but also, you know, include a, so if you can, if you've gathered the review through social media as well, by the way, this is another little tip. Um, you, you can actually embed a Facebook review or a Google review. And what it will do is it will actually embed their profile picture, which will make it look obviously a lot more trustworthy. 
But then you've obviously, obviously you've got the contact form. Um, 